Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This here represents a generic quadratic equation. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. This over here, 5x squared plus 2x minus 9 equals 0, would be a specific example of a quadratic equation. In this case, a is 5, b is 2, and c is negative 9. Last time, I suggested that we were going to learn four ways of solving quadratic equations like this. The first was by graphing, the second was by factoring, the third was by a way called completing the square, and finally, of course, the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula being x is equal to opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So these were the four ways that we're going to revisit in solving quadratic equations. Today we shall talk about factoring as a method of solving quadratic equations. Now here are two examples, x squared minus 3x plus 9 equals 0, and 5x squared minus 17x plus 6 equals 0. So these were two very different quadratic equations that we were going to review. The most important difference between the two is this 5 over here like this. 5 that is, in comparison to the 1 that's over here, the invisible 1. See, that makes a very big difference in factoring these two expressions or these two equations. That is, if you have something over here other than a 1, those equations are going to be more trickier to factor. So in factoring quadratic expressions or equations like these, you're going to encounter really only two types of equations. Ones that have a 1 over here, and others that have anything other than a 1 over here like this. So consider this example over here. This is the first kind of equation. Here the a is 1. Now the idea here for us is going to be to factor this expression like this and then solve it. Now factoring, if you recall, is kind of like the reverse of foiling. That is, we use FOIL, the acronym, to help us multiply two binomials like this. And when we do that, we get something like ax squared plus bx plus c. So, we typically use FOIL to multiply binomials to give us this expression like this. Now, we factor this expression and take it back into two binomials. So, when we say we're going to factor this, we mean to bring it back into two binomial forms like this. So, that is what we mean by factoring. It's kind of like reverse of foiling. So going this way is foiling, and going this way is factoring. Just to give an example, when we have two binomials like this, and we wanted to foil it, we would multiply the first terms, in this case it's x and x, that would give us x squared. And then the O stands for the outer terms. We multiply the outer terms, that gives us 4x, and then we multiply the inner terms, that is the i in the foil, in this case it's going to be 2x, and finally, we multiply the last term, the L in FOIL, and that is 8. So FOIL is basically an acronym, a mnemonic, something to help us multiply two binomials like this. And you notice that frequently that these two inner terms, the OI in the FOIL, so to speak, they are like terms, so you can combine them, x squared plus 6x plus 8. So this process of taking two binomials, multiplying them together, that's FOILing. Now, if you were to do the reverse, that is, if you take this trinomial here, and to extract those two binomials out of that, this process, the reverse process, would be called factoring. Okay, so now we appreciate how foiling and factoring are related. They're reverse processes. Foiling helps us to multiply binomials like this, and factoring is taking a trinomial like this and converting it into a product of two binomials. So our job here is to factor this. So the first thing that you do is you look at that first term. Because this first term is the product of the first two terms over here in the binomial, here and here. That is, whatever goes here and whatever goes here, it must multiply to give x squared. Now that's not so bad, because it can only be x and x. So the first thing to do is to look at the first term. Now the second thing to do is to look at the last term over here. And we just don't look at it, of course, we write down all the factors of that last term. That is something like this. 1 and 10, because 1 times 10 is 10. And then 2 and 5, because 2 times 5 is 10. So when I say we look at the last term over here, we look at the last term and we write all the different factors of that last term. Because one of these combinations is going to go over here. In other words, this would be either 1 and 10, 
or 2 and 5 like this. Now the question is, which one? If you don't know, you can just put something there and say 1 and 10. And then what you do is what I call to make the smiley faces. That is the product of the outer and the inner terms. So what you do is you make a big smiley face over here for the outer product, that's x times 10 or 10x. And then you can make a smaller smiley faces like this, 1 times x and that is 1x. So what you do then is look at these products over here. And these two must add or subtract to give you this middle term over here. The question then is, is there any way of adding and subtracting 10x and 1x to give 3x? No, there isn't, right? So this is not going to work. So this does not work. Okay, then we try the 2 and 5. So it's 2 and 5. And then we do it again. We make the smiley faces, the outer and the inner smiley faces, right? The outer product is going to be 5x, and the inner product is going to be 2x, like this. And then we ask ourselves again, do these two terms, do they add or subtract to give this middle term or not? Well, is there any way of combining 5x and 2x to get 3x? Yes, there is, right? Because 5x minus 2x is 3x. So this product, or this arrangement of numbers, the 2 and 5, will work. Okay, so now we've figured out that this will work. And the last thing to do is figure out the sign, that is what goes over here and what goes over here. In doing that, you look at this sign first, and then you look at this sign. If this sign here is positive, that means both of these signs are going to be the same. Either they're going to be both positive or they're going to be both negative. And if this sign over here is negative, that means these two signs are going to be different. They're not going to be the same. One is going to be positive, the other one is going to be negative. In this case, as you can see, the sign is negative, which means these two signs are going to be different. One is going to be positive, the other one is going to be negative, or it's going to be negative like this, positive like this. So which way is it going to be? Well, that is determined by this sign over here, because this sign over here tells us the bigger product is going to be negative. So this sign in this case tells us it's going to be different, the signs are going to be different, and this negative over here tells us the bigger product the bigger product is going to be negative. So you look at this sign to figure out if they're the same or different, and then you look at this sign for further direction. And this sign being negative over here tells us that the bigger product is going to be negative. In this case, this is the bigger product, and we have to make it a negative. So we put a negative over here and a positive over here, and that is now a factored expression. Now, if you were to FOIL this, if you do first, outer, inner, last, of course, you would get this. Okay, now we have factored out the expression. Then what you do is you change this one equation and you write it as two equations. This means x plus 2 equals 0 or x minus 5 equals 0. That's because of zero product property. That is, if you have two numbers like this, a times b equals 0, the only way this is going to ever happen is that if a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. In other words, when you multiply two numbers and you get 0, one of them has to be 0, right? How else are you going to get a 0? So this is called the zero product property. And it is a zero product property that allows us to change this one equation into these two equations. And then it's quite easy to solve. You subtract 2 from both sides like this, and then you get x is equal to negative 2, and here you add 5 to both sides like this, and then you get x is equal to 5. So these are the two answers. x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to 5. Now we can go back and check these, that is substitute those two numbers over here to make sure that those are the correct answers. But in the interest of time, we'll skip that for now. Okay, so how about this one? So in factoring this, we look at the first term, x squared. That's going to be easy. I'm going to put an x over here and x over here. Now the second thing I'm going to do is look at this last term over here and then write down all the factors of the last term. So here's 1 and 28 and that's 2 and 14 and then there's 4 and 7, 5, 6. So that's it. So these three pairs are the factors of 28 I believe. Okay, so one of these three pairs is like the winner combination. When there are multiple combinations like this, sometimes I just kind of pick like in the middle one and try it out. 
Okay, so I'm going to put 2 over here and 14 over here. And then you recall, you just put them smiley faces around them. This is the outer term and the inner term. The outer term is 14x and the inner term is 2x. And then we say, well, these two terms, they have to add and subtract to give this middle term over here. Well, how are you going to add 14x and 2x or subtract 14x and 2x to get 11x? There's no way of getting 11x from 14x and 2x. So it looks like our initial choice here was wrong. No worries, so we cross this out. All right, and then I'm going to try this. The outer product is 7x and the inner product is 4x. So now, do these add or subtract to give 11x somehow? Well, they do, don't they? Because 4x plus 7x is 11x. So it looks like we hit the jackpot here, so this works. And then the last thing that we do is we look at the signs. First we look at this sign, and then we look at this sign over here. Since this sign is positive, it suggests that both of these two signs are going to be the same. And this sign here tells us that both of them are going to be positive. So our equation now is x plus 4 times the quantity x plus 7 equals 0. Now we divide this into 2, and we have x plus 4 equal to 0, or x plus 7 equal to 0. Okay, solving this, subtracting 4 from both sides, you get x is equal to negative 4, and subtracting 7 from both sides over here, you get x is equal to negative 7. And these are the two answers for this equation. Now how about this one? Well, the concept is the same. We're going to factor this into two binomials like this, and then use the zero property. But now here it's going to be tricky because a here is not 1. So what we do is we write all the factors of this term, just like we did for the last term over here. Well, this one is not so bad because it's 5, and there's only one combination that will give us 5s. So it's 1 and 5. So the factors of 5 are 1 and 5. So it's going to be 1x and 5x like this. And then we look at the last term over here and write down all the factors there. Okay, that's 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. And that's it, right? Now, which one of these two will work? I don't know, so you're just going to try them out. But you see, 1 and 6, you can take each of these pair and put them in two different ways. So it could be like 1 and 6 over here, or 6 and 1 over here. So there are two different ways that we can put this. Now, which one of these is going to work? I don't know, you're just going to have to try them out. Okay, so let's try 1 and 6. And then you make a lot of smiley faces, that's what we're going to do. So this is going to be 6x, and that's going to be 5x. Now, these two have to add or subtract to give the middle term. Well, uh, no, right? But we don't give up yet. We tried the other combination. We put the 6 and 1 in the other order. How about this? 6 over here and 1 over here. More smiley faces to get 1x, and that's like 30x. That's even worse, it looks like, right? Okay, so now 1 and 6 is just not going to work either way around. Okay, now we're left with 2 and 3. More smiley faces. Okay, so this is 3x and 10x, right? And these products have to add or subtract to give 17. Hmm, close, but not quite, right? That's 13x or 7x, but it's not going to work. But then we don't give up, right? We try the other combination and make more smiley faces. So, the outer product is 2x, and the inner product is 15x, right? That will work, because they do add to give 17x, right? Okay, and the last thing, of course, we look at the signs. Okay, that plus says that both of these signs are going to be the same, that is this one and this one is going to be the same signs, and this one tells us that both of them are going to be negative, like this. Now we use the zero product property to separate these two products. So get x minus 3 equals to 0, or 5x minus 2 equals to 0. Get x is equal to 3, and add 2 to both sides over here, and divide both sides by 5 like this, and you get x is equal to 2 fifths. So the two answers are x is equal to 2 fifths, and x is equal to 3. In summary, I suggested that we're going to review the four ways of solving quadratic equations. The graphing method, factoring, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. And I suggested that in regards to factoring problems, that we're going to encounter two types of problems. Ones that have a to be 1 over here like this, and others where a is not 1. 
these are trickier to factor, but if you're methodical about it, they're not so bad. And then I suggested when you factor it like this, you can change this product here into two separate equations like this. And this was because of the zero product property. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum.